doors, you cannot be successful or happy. Thank you very much. Would the clerk please call the roll for today? Thanks, John. Getting there. 15, I'm sorry, 15 present. And Alderman Matichek is not excused. Next, I'd like to ask you to please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is the approval of our minutes from the last meeting. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support on the minutes. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Joe. Wait, wake up, Joe. 15 eyes. <laughs> motion passes. There were no council appointments to consider this evening, so we'll go on to the presentation of the Harbor Center Master Plan. Uh, this is a, a master plan that's been going on for the last three months or so, and today we have representatives of the Harbor Center Business Improvement District, uh, their uh, board president, David Gass, and, uh, and their executive director, uh, Dave Hoffman, otherwise known as their manager. And Chad Pelichek from City Planning will also be assisting in this presentation. And Chad, I think you were going to begin the process. As soon as he's plugged in, we'll be ready to go. My so I'll I'll start this thing off um, as the mayor said I'm Chad Pelishek the director of planning and Thank development you. and with me is Dave Gass from the business improvement district how we hand plan to handle this tonight is we've got a PowerPoint um, to talk about the highlights of the plan um, we're gonna start out by doing a little bit of an introduction talking a little bit about the economic and uh, indicators we found as part of the plan what the current conditions of our downtown are in, as compared to our city as the whole. Um, after that, we're gonna go into some of the key strate strategic plans to move forward in some of the core strategies. Dave's gonna handle that section. And then we're gonna finish up with uh, more information on the design standard side of it that we're gonna work on hard to implement along A Street corridor. Um, so with that, the Harbor Center vision uh, as part of the plan, and the mayor said we had hired Veer Becker and Associates out of Madison to help us with this. Um, they came up, but there was a number of public uh, input sessions and surveys and steer com steering committees that worked together to develop what we see here today. Um, the vision of this uh, plan is really to look at a downtown that's economically uh, prosperous, working on focusing on retaining jobs, businesses, and new investment. A vibrant downtown, we've talked a lot about residential opportunities, new residential opportunities being a focus in our downtown. You'll see more later on that. Um, an active 24-hour community, support expanded retail and, and service uh, sector, which we believe will come after um, we've got more people living here and it's becoming that 24-7 um, <coughs> operation. Inviting a well-preserved and restored historic buildings. We heard a lot of people say that we need to really hone in on what we have existing, uh, work to improve those. Uh, new buildings need to be uh, cohesive and fit into the overall downtown scheme. So that's where the design standards piece has come in to give us as staff something to work towards when people come in and are proposing improvements to their building. Um, complementary new development, active public spaces. Um, We've heard that they, you know, that 
we, we if we're going to have a vibrant downtown we need to activate our public areas and some of the you know you'll see later some of the proposed plans for potentially the Boston store could give us some of that additional active space in our center of our downtown and then how do we connect our area the business improvement district is is rather large um, includes three distinct areas the downtown riverfront and south pier we know that we've got a river dividing them how do we connect all those to work together with cross marketing and connection opportunities so this map here shows kind of the business improvement district um, I'm not expecting you to be able to read it, but one of the one of the things we have is our downtown has 23 acres of developable developable land that sits vacant currently. So you know we're we're in an opportunity where we have that to move forward to build new tax base, new jobs. We've got some major destinations in our downtown. Um, we've got a world class John Michael Kohler Art Center, Stephanie Weil Center for the Performing Arts, the Mead Public <coughs> Library. You know, so those assets are, are what a lot of communities are hoping to get when they start a planning process, and we just need to leverage those better. Uh, look at the Arts, Culture, and Food District. We'll get into a little bit more on that. Streetscape improvements. So we've done a lot over the years with our A Street. Um, there's some additional connectivity things that have been proposed that. Um, can kind of make the user feel a little bit more uh, connected to what's happening. One of the first phases of that is a wayfinding signage plan, which we'll talk about later, but we're implementing that with our Department of Public Works uh, in the planning department, and you'll see those signs going up as of today um, and over the next couple months. So we're working on early phases. Connectivity, how do we connect these areas? There's a proposal for you know a water taxi a trolley service rent bikes those types of things to get people in the different areas and then some minor infrastructure improvements really with around the Boston store and re reintroducing some street grids so under the economic and market analysis um, <clears throat> the land use is primarily commercial residential and civic as we all know we have ample parking and uh, you know there's some opportunity there I think for some new development on some of those sites um, and there's a number of vacant and underutilized uh, sites the interesting thing the the downtown supports 4875 full-time and part-time workers um, of which there's 245 employers and there's a mix of hospitality res uh, restaurant finance insurance so you can kind of see on that chart uh, the breakdown of those different uh, classes. Sheboygan County is 14th in Wisconsin for tourism spending. We've heard that from our tourism uh, group. There's multiple destinations in the region that provide these attractions and draw a range of visitors and 50% of the outside dollars coming into our market are spent in our downtown. Demographics and housing, we know uh, that we are lacking on housing um, from the point of more uh, upper market rate type housing. We've got a number of housing developments currently that are income subsidized, so you have to make a certain income guideline in order to meet, uh, live in those units, although some of those are coming off of those restrictions later this year, so they're going to open up some additional opportunity, but it still doesn't fill the hole um, that's there for housing. So looking at dem uh, the demand for new apartments um, is you know expected to grow, and you know, like I said, it's it's the downtown housing is really split between uh, owner occupied and there's some rental units. Global trends impacting downtown. So the the um, they looked the consultant looked at ways. You know, are we following the trends? Are you know, are we way outside of them? How do we you know rein in what we have? So we know that empty nesters are demand for how they're looking for housing, uh, healthcare, and walkable neighborhoods. Um, Global trends are showing there's a gen, uh, generation X and the millennial that prefer this lifestyle um, in diverse communities in the in the downtown where the activity is, uh, where they can walk to you know destinations and do stuff without having to get into their car. Um, this pressure to recruit, educate, and retain skilled workers. Um, a lot of our companies, and as part of this plan, we've had discussions with a number of the large employers in this com community and have understood that a lot of their new hires are leaving the market because they're not finding the housing that they're, they would like to live in. So there's people driving from downtown Milwaukee to uh, employers from Port Washington, Grafton, Mequon. So we need to try to capture those people in our community. Uh, increasing the demand for professional housing, focusing on the quality, the function, the convenience 
um, all those types of things. Rise in alternate uh, transportation use, we've done some of that with the non-motorized program. I think there's more we can look at. Uh, increase the need for locally based solutions um, due to the decline in federal and state funding. So we need to bring private partners to the table to make this happen. It's not gonna be a strictly a public endeavor. And explosive, uh, explosive growth in technology, and I think there's some opportunity in, in technology-based companies as well. So when you look at the Harbor Center market share to the city, the graph that's shown here, um, it's interesting to know that 60, almost 63% of um, the market share comes, the hotels in the city are located within the business improvement district or the downtown. You can see the breakdown there uh, in green is the uh, share of the property value, in the blue is the retail sales, the red is residents, and the uh, orange is 12% uh, is employment. Um, in, over the last number of years, I said a substantial amount has been invested of 45 million into our downtown, and the 10-year plan is to increase this market share uh, to 12% of, of the city totals. We know that uh, this has shown that there's a residential growth projections. 376 new units is what's felt that in the next 10 years the downtown <coughs> could um, support. Um, those could be a mix of market rate, they could be subsidized, they could be uh, senior housing, you know, it, it could be all of that. Um, it's not unrealistic. We've done that in the past 10 years, uh, believe it or not, that there's been about 275 new units um, that have been developed with the whole Water Street development. The retail growth projections increase demand from household spending and residential and employment growth. Uh, combined is about 6.5 million in consumer demand and could support about 36,000 new square feet of newly constructed retail space um, and we have the land to do that. Office growth projections, um, Harbor Center businesses employ 12% of all of Sheboygan workers. It's in, uh, proposed to increase by 892 workers over 10 years and you can see 134,000 to 178,000 square feet of new office space and it may need, we may need to recruit one or more large uh, employers to the Harbor Center for a headquarters or a select divisions. And that's really where the focus of the Pentair property had come in and looked at as being a location for a larger corporate type entity to build and, and bring those jobs to this area. So with that, I'm gonna turn over the strategic recommendations to Dave Gass and then I'll finish up. Just press the arrow. Or the enter. Uh, or the enter, okay, great. Um, good evening, everybody, uh, members of the council. Um, I'm privileged uh, uh, to be here in behalf of the Business Improvement District to give you the uh, key elements of this plan. And maybe let me step back a moment and give you a, a little bit of reasons why, do we, why did we go this route. It may seem obvious, but sometimes it's important to state the obvious. Um, you know, last year, um, our bid uh, business Improvement District, affectionately known as the BID, uh, really had decided, kind of looked at itself and said, you know, where are we going as an organization? Um, the purpose of the Business Improvement District is really to promote the growth of the uh, south, the Harbor Center area, which you saw the map of, it, but in essence includes three areas, South Pier, Riverfront, and most of downtown up to Fountain Park. And um, while we have pockets of success in there, we have pockets. We don't want pockets, we want an entire successful area. And we have great amenities in the Harbor Center um, and we, we felt that we needed to uh, find a way to get our, coordinate our efforts, the efforts of all the people involved and so we decided that we really needed to sit down and put together a plan and if we were gonna do that, to think that we are gonna do that on our own was not realistic because first of all, we. Um, we didn't have the cap capabilities to do all the elements of the plan. Number two, every one of us has our own opinion and who's to say whose opinion is better than the other person's. Outside expertise can help you get the right opinions to bubble to the surface. And plus to have capability and credibility to the plan. So as Chad indicated then, there was a lot of data gathering and, and analysis that went on um, that he went over that led to where we are right now, okay? So the plan, um, and this plan is like 50 pages, um, but
But this is the essence of, of the plan. And I think it's really good in the sense it's simple. It's three legged. Um, I kind of like three. I think three is a great number. It's tangible. It's digestible. Uh, so we have three core elements to this plan. Um, um, number one is art, the creation of an arts, culture, and food district. And we'll go, to, go through each one of these in a little bit more detail. Uh, create our promotion of housing and urban development, excuse me, and working on better connection um, and cross-marketing uh, of the segments of the bid. Um, one of the things that we determined we had to do with this plan is we have to demonstrate visual progress and get the, you know, the maximum number of people involved. Um, we got to have some short-term short success. We can't be sit there lingering and lingering and lingering and nothing happening. Um, and we have to have ultimately long-term goals uh, that we have to, the short-term success links us to um, and obviously demonstrate success. So let's just talk about these elements um, um, in short. Um, the arts, culture, and food district, we, we need to look at in, uh, leveraging and enhancing in our, our existing strengths. And what are those strengths? Again, it seems obvious, but really when we looked at this, um, maybe the obvious was being ignored because it was so obvious. Um, we have a world-class arts center in the John Michael Kohler Arts Center. Unbelievable. You talk to people in other cities, and they like marvel. How did you guys get that over there? And it's sitting there, and it's sitting there. They do their thing, and they do their thing. Um, we have the Weill, Steffi Weil Center. Excellent, great facility. They do their thing. We have the Above and Beyond Museum. Great museum, they do their thing. We have performing arts groups that are downtown now. Um, we have the Heritage Museum, and we have the Spaceport. We have all of these great cultural events, which would be the envy of cities three times our size, and we have them in Sheboygan. And we need to work together, and how can we leverage those to get more people coming downtown? Because people hear a lot of things. People coming downtown visit places, they spend money, and uh, they, they shop. So we needed to capture those additional dollars. And so we looked at that, and our consultant said, you have great amenities that you just need to do this. That's like your number one strength that you got to build on. Um, housing and urban development. Now, this may not seem really obvious, but um, you know, downtown Sheboygan, the harbor center of the area, is really an area that people would like to live next to or in. Um, it's near a great lake. We have great amenities there already. We have great restaurants. We have these great cultural events. Um, it's right next to a trail that's been built in the city or close to the trail. So we've got all these key ingredients. So it's a great area for putting housing. And once you get housing, you get more people <coughs> who want to go to the arts and culture and want to shop and do all those neat things. So you really need to focus on getting more housing and urban development. And that, in, that, in, that entails also improving the A Street aesthetics, um, increasing activity um, as well. Um, and then the last thing that we're going to focus on is, um, um, again, connecting the three segments that I talked about, the South Pier, the Riverfront, and the Downtown. Right now, um, they, aren't, they don't connect as smoothly as we'd like them to. We all know that South Pier is a bit on a peninsula. And so it's, it's not like you go straight there, you kind of circle around and we need to work on that because um, you know, any kind of um, uh, obstacle can cause people not to visit someplace. And so the goal is to remove as many obstacles as we can um, and then um, create, a lot, create a lot of amenities for uh, cross-marketing and connecting. Um, some transfer, transformative opportunities um, Real quickly, uh, again, this is somewhat um, re redundant, but you have the A Street Gateway, which we need to work on, the Arts, Culture, and Food District, and then the Library Plaza, um, um, which is next to the Boston store, which we now know that we're going to have greater ability to influence than we maybe thought we would three months ago, four months ago. Um, the, uh, real quickly, an example of what could be done on the A Street is you could where the former Alliant building is now, the Heritage Museum. Um, you know, if you took that, that um, walkway and you opened it up and you know, put more landscaping and greenery, just what a difference it makes. You see across the street an example. I'm gonna give a cautionary note here. 
Um, you know, people will come up and say, so you're tearing down the Boston Star building, or you're going to tear down this person's buildings. Nothing has been decided. These are just ideas and examples of things that could be done. And if you don't start with ideas and examples, you can't really get there. You can't create the visual pattern that will get you excited about doing something. So um, for the public, for the media who's watching this, uh, there are all ideas out there. Nothing has been decided about a lot of these elements. So people do not get overly excited that things have been decided in that regard. Um, the Arts, Culture, and Food District, we have the, this, this shows the Boston Star property. And again, it's an example of what could be done. A decision has not been made to tear it down, uh, but it's an example of what could be done there um, based upon potential um, um, uh, development. And again, this tends to try to create um, an open area for traffic, which would be a, that's kind of a, a middle ground between John Michael Kohler Arts Center and the library and the Steffi Weil Center and all these things to serve right in the middle there so it could be a gathering point, whether for retail space for arts and crafts or potential educational learning there or um, um, a park area. Um, the library plaza, here's an example. I'm sure there's going to be some people out there who are fans of the Helperin uh, um, uh, water display there who might get a little excited about it. But this is just an example of what we could do there. And the other thing that I, we're, we as a bid board um, recognize is that, you know, there are some people who are going to be, um, will identify all the weaknesses and all the obstacles to getting something done. Um, we don't care. We know that's going to happen. Our attitude is we got to work together and we got to move forward and try to be positive. Um, and there will be obstacles, but we'll get over them. And that's how we're going to approach this. Um, in the first one to three years, what we hope to be able to do is we hope to be able to, again, um, create this district and, and, and start to have some things happening. Um, we hope to create some awareness of redevelopment sites. Um, and I might add, obviously, with the Arts, Culture, and Food District, we already got a head start in that we've got the Boston Store building um, in, in, within our, our control. Um, <coughs> And with these uh, redevelopment sites and, and, and creating knowledge, we've got some seminars and things like that that are being, being planned. Um, improving pedestrian experience and wayfinding, you know, Im improving the uh, design standards and some of the signage, and, and as Chad indicated, some of that is already in place. Um, uh, city development and city staff have been working on that, so you're already going to see some of this taking place. Uh, over a 10-year period, this is just an example of sort of what we'd like to see 10 years from now um, from the various work that we do on this plan, focusing on these uh, three areas. Um, and uh, hopefully we could do better than this, but if we could accomplish these things after 10 years, um, things would be humming. It would be, a, it'd be an incredible dynamic area down in the Harbor Center. Um, so I think that's, then I'll turn it over to uh, Chad for uh, design standards. So I know this is a little off kilter up there because we see it nice here. But anyway, I'll try to talk you through it. What we decided was, like I said early is we, earlier, is we have standards for riverfront development. We have standards for the South Pier uh, area guidelines that when people come in and want to propose to build something, they have to follow these guidelines. We didn't. We never had anything for the downtown, so we always struggled as staff over what should be downtown and what do the people want to see. A lot of times, it was up to the Architecture Review Board and the Planning Commission to approve these developments, and whether they worked or they didn't work, it was just really the discussion that happened. So, these design standards that you see here. Um, really are looking at and making these building these blocks look uniform and inviting and help us kind of pr preserve this pedestrian friendliness and and protecting our historic structures in the in the survey that was one out of the 650 people that took the survey as part of this process that was one of the top um, 
that was one of the top things that people said is we need to restore our buildings and you know bring some uniformity to our downtown. So you can see the two different pictures here. Um, one is a block on between Center and Penn on, on A Street on the top photo that I will say though that block is a part of the Benjamin Moore painting project that will be painted later this uh, year. So there will be some enhancements there but you can see the a kind of uncommon color scheme and everything doesn't match and then if you look at the buildings on the south and that's really where um, like the jeweler is and some of those buildings you can see more cohesiveness and connectivity so that's kind of the vision we're trying to accomplish here the design standards are really developed there's a section for existing buildings and for new buildings and it looks at things such as building height the scale <coughs> the massing ground floor treatments, what you, you know, what you see when you walk down the street, facade colors, it lays out a color scheme for different sections of the downtown, lighting, um, signage, building materials, that kind of stuff that, it, and it gets into very, m a lot of detail and gives us some direction in what people have to try to tr uh, achieve in their development. So the design, the area was des developed into three, four design districts. We have the downtown north, which is really from Ontario up to Michigan and and that's a little bit outside of the bid boundaries we felt that as staff that we needed to have this along a street the intent is to start working after this with our businesses on Indiana and on Michigan because we have kind of a u-shaped commercial corridor and try to bring those into this at a later date um, so we kind of have some standards for our entire commercial district um, but you can see from the downtown north uh, it lays out some color tones underneath the picture of what what is proposed to kind of keep it into those tan colors with some accents and those types of things. Then the Arts, Culture, and Food District is a really to kind of dive into this regional destination area with natural and muted tones and these secondary colors. And you know, we this area is also part of the Benjamin Moore painting project, so some of the colors that have been selected as part of that are, are kind of tied into this, so we've got a project in the works. Uh, the downtown south is really this corridor from the A Street Bridge up to the Swing Streets and what some of those um, area up to Penn actually, what some of those areas should look like. And then, I'm sorry, that's the area from Penn up to uh, the library is the, the, the downtown south. And then the waterfront transitional piece is that piece I'm saying from A Street uh, up to uh, the Swing Streets where, you know, there's, there's some proposed development opportunities uh, that could happen in that area and it kind of ties in kind of the color scheme. So that's pretty much about it. Um, I know Dave wants to address one more thing, but one thing I do want to say is if if anybody in the public or the council is interested in the Harbor Center Master Plan, it is not 50 pages, it's about 130 pages. It's on the city's website, which is uh, www. Uh, .ci.sheboygan.wi.us. If you go there, there's a banner running in the home page and you click on it, it'll take you to uh, an area where there's three or four different sections because it's a very large document and you can look at the specifics on the plan and I would encourage everybody to do so. Thank you. I think I was thinking of the executive summary. Um, <laughs> so anyway, uh, as a couple of just closing comments I wanted to make was um, about this product so far and it will continue is um, I think this master plan has been an example, a, a good example of a partnership between um, the bid and the city. Um, we've had uh, um, Chad in his office and the co council and the mayor's office, we've all worked uh, closely on putting pieces of this together. Um, obviously the Boston Star element involved a lot of uh, cooperation and I think that's really a success in and of itself. So that's a great, a good start for us and we look forward to continuing to work together in partnership with the city because as Chad indicated this plan is going to require both <laughs> it's not just the city who's going <laughs> to implement this um, it's going to require the city and private people to work together to make this happen um, Matt, as far as process uh, the uh, bid uh, the bid board approved this plan um, last was it last week Dave yeah la at its last board meeting so um, we've approved it we're ready to go um, our next step, once um, assuming the Common Council approves it, our next step would be to then talk about the implementation, which is identifying how do we go about tackling some of the action steps. And, and in the master plan, there's a section, it's, small, it's six, seven, eight, maybe ten pages, of uh, a number of suggested steps 
not concrete steps, but suggested steps. And so what we need now is to uh, identify groups of people who are going to try to tackle some of those steps. And I think we'll start probably small. We'll probably start with the number three again and look at trying to maybe develop three groups of people, three task force, whatever, you, whatever we call that, and look at what, is, what can we tackle first to get the biggest success quickly and then move on from there. So that's what our thinking is as far as a bid. Were there any questions from the aldermen? Go ahead, Alderman Lewandowski. One of the most common questions I'm asked about the downtown is, will there ever be a grocery store downtown? And I'm wondering what the odds are of that. I can respond to that. I think um, we've looked at that in 2009. The city hired a consultant <coughs> to do a downtown uh, market study to see if our downtown can support a <coughs> grocery store. And at that time, um, there wasn't enough the demographics weren't there to justify the expense unless it was substantially city subsidized. Now, <coughs> once it's kind of that build it and they will come, I think once we can work on getting um, more urban housing <coughs> downtown and getting that base down here, I think we have you know some credibility to try to uh, recruit a downtown grocery store. But I think right now as it stands, it's difficult, although there's a lot of people that say they would shop downtown, with the, when, when you draw the radiuses around our current stores, there's not a lot of open area in the downtown and they're covered pretty well when people travel up to a quarter mile to get there and that's what retailers look at. And the other <coughs> issue is, is until we build that mass, they're not drawing anybody from the east, obviously from the lake. So they've got a three-sided uh, <coughs> radius around it. So we at back in 2010, we had communications with our local Piggly Wiggly and tried to see if they would be interested in opening up a metro market or something, and they said the way the numbers are, they just couldn't justify that expense at this stage. So I think it's something we can work towards uh, in the future. I wouldn't say that it's not going to ever happen, but I think right now um, I don't believe we have enough mass in the downtown to support that. Any other questions? Okay, one, no. thing, one thing I will say is this: the document that's on the agenda tonight is being referred to the Planning Commission and the Architecture Review Board. We'll come back to this body for final approval and adoption on the April 14th meeting. So if there's anybody in the public or the council that's got questions in between there, feel free to get in touch with city staff and we'll be happy to address those. Thank you very much for your presentation tonight, and thank you very much to the bid, uh, all their uh, merchant members who participated on the committee, as well as all the city staff. Job well done. Next, we'll move on to the public forum. Uh, yes, we have two this evening. First on the list is Dulcie Johnson. Dulcie, if you could come up, please. And Dulcie, can I get your home address, please? 1306 North 3rd Street, Sheboygan. Okay, and you will have five minutes. Mayor Vandersteen, City Clerk Richards, Aldermen, and citizens. A few years ago, I remember former Mayor Susha spoke about the council having supposedly found a money tree to finance some big project. It would seem that this council has found a money tree to buy the Boston store property and a new fire truck. I don't know the criteria for buying a new fire truck, but if it has anything to do with usage, I would point out that the fire department responded to only 48 structure fires in 2012 and only 30 structure fires in 2013. That's less than one call per station per month. The purchase is a lease to buy deal of $75,497 for seven years at 2.99% interest, which will cost the taxpayers a grand total of $528,480. <coughs> the price of the Boston store property is $500,000. I was at a meeting with Alderman Carlson a couple weeks ago and I asked him what the taxes were on the building. He said he did not know and I sense did not feel that it was important because acquiring the site was important to the redevelopment of the downtown. In figuring the total cost, however, you must also add the loss of property taxes. The taxes on the Boston Store Building and the South Parking Lot are $102,833. 
the taxes on the north parking lot are $4,274 for a total of $107,107, making the investment $607,107. We have just heard the bids master plan. Are there other plans? <coughs> I hope that the city and the council did due diligence before deciding to purchase this property. Granted, one would not want the building to sit vacant for a long time, <coughs> but one would hope that the city and the council had good information to substantiate their constituents' investment. How many years will it be before the site will again generate tax revenue? Each year it remains a city-owned property, the city loses tax revenue, which over several years will add up to a substantial sum. I believe in a strong downtown. When I was in the council in the 1980s, I opposed the mini malls that investors wanted to build beyond the downtown. My position always was build downtown. I served on the Redevelopment Authority between 2005 and 2010, and again, I objected to more mini-malls. Of course, the authority was happy when Mr. Schaefer developed his properties at 8th and Penn. This was originally to be a two- or three-story building with apartments on the upper floors. Mr. Schaefer, however, built a one-story building because, as I remember, he could not finance and find tenants for a two- or three-story building. Indeed, much of that building has sat empty for four or five years. When Mr. Schaefer asked the authority for financial help with one of his North and Calumet area projects, I suggested he build on the vacant lot which he owns across from the Wild Center. His answer was that businesses don't want to be downtown. I am skeptical if the interest in the downtown has suddenly done a 180, but you will not find anyone who would be more pleased than me if 8th Street could be successfully redeveloped. I would love to see more shops downtown, and more offices and housing would been, bring more people to the area. But as you know, there are currently plenty of opportunities available. When I was on the Redevelopment Authority, someone proposed a new office retail housing building next to Above and Beyond, but that did not materialize. The relatively new Nemshoff office building has been advertising for tenants for several years. The building that housed J Johnson Bank has been vacant for several years, and the building on the corner of 8th and Center has been vacant for over a year. The Sheboygan Press building is for sale and would be suitable for offices or possibly housing. The former Walgreen building on 8th Street has been for sale for several years, and Mr. Schaefer is still looking for tenants at 8th and Penn. I was interested to learn from the press story that more downtown housing appears to be the more pressing need and that existing vacant office and retail space will first need to be filled before building more. How many years will that take? What will it cost the taxpayers if the Boston Store property is not developed for several years? Will the taxpayers end up with another struggling South Pier development? The cost of the Boston Store property and the new fire truck is almost equal to the projected budget deficit for 2015 of 1.3 million. It's obvious that the garbage fee will have to be extended. And though the plan is again for no budget increases for 2015, somehow that never works out for all departments. A half million here, a half million there, and as they say, pretty soon you're talking about real money. The city is fortunate to have a money tree. Thank you, Dulcie. Uh, and finally on the list would be Mike Brunette. <coughs> Mike, can I have your home address, please? 1925 South 26th Street. And, <clears throat> excuse me, you will have five minutes, sir. All right. And to start off, it was brought to my intention that I wasted city money by getting a CD made and not coming and pick it up. So. Here's a bunch of CDs <laughs> to cover that. And in the future, I might add, it's like, like Chad said, I was very happy to see that city plan is online and you can do it. And it's one of my pet peeves when things go on. Not that it's CDs or whatever, when anything isn't available and you have to hunt for anything, nobody likes it. It's a step in the right direction. But what I really came here for to talk about was one of my lost causes, the quarry. And it's one of those, it's not going to cost 500000 not a nickel, not a penny, never costs anybody anything really. And it's like the city still maintains it. I mean, I talk to people who claim they do such a thing, but it's one of those things that last time I spoke, it ended up being a unanimous thing. It's getting voted on again tonight. 
you're giving it to somebody who basically is running an LLC out of their house outside of Madison, and they're getting it for that crazy amount of probably a buck, I don't recall exactly, but it's basically gonna be another dead year for the quarry, like last year, because it's too expensive, it's crap. I mean, it's bouncy toys, it's not a beach. It's like giving somebody Elkhart Lake and saying, how could you possibly screw this up? And th that's the answer, go look at it. I mean, you saw what it was last year, and it's like, you know what it used to be. I mean, I'm researching something the other day at the Historical Society, and I come across an article from 1971 of them putting up the fence. Does anybody here know why they put up the fence? They put it up to limit people because they wanted to keep it to under 2,000 people at a time. That's how busy the quarry was. And it's like safety thing, it was too busy. And it's like they kind of handled that problem. And looking through everything, I don't see all these danger problems. I don't, all the people that died two years ago when it was open are sitting in my trunk right now. And it's like, yeah, it's not an issue because there aren't any. And it's like, because that can be open to no liability, you'd have to close Lake Michigan. I'm being redundant, it's the same thing over and over again. But why we would possibly, I mean, you're working hard. I like hearing what Chad's saying about the downtown and that, and it's like, I mean, you need to have plans. I mean, open things up, change, try to get things going. But when you just do things that are blatantly, obviously, make life for people that live here worse, just plain worse, and it's like, it, it, it doesn't matter what you do for anything else. You have to do simple things that make it a better place to live. And in my opinion, closing the quarry makes it so if you want to go swimming, especially this summer again, it's like you're going to truck out to Elkhart Lake every time you want to jump into an inland lake. I mean, that's about as close as you can get. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. And it's something that we basically just have sitting here, but yet... We don't. It might as well be a million miles away if that's even possible on, on the planet. I don't know how big it is. And that's all I have. Thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Next, we'll go on to uh, mayor's announcements. Uh, there's a hazardous waste collection coming up on April 5th on uh, Saturday from 8 to 11 at Maywood. Uh, there's a charge of $10 per vehicle, and there's also another uh, one staged uh, the day, uh, on, uh, rather on May 9th at the Southside Shed, the Highway Department building, and that will be on Friday from 1 to 5 on, on May 9th. Um, our Department of uh, City Planning has scheduled a landlord training session. Um, they put together a quite a, a good uh, program and, and book of materials for the people that participate. That'll be coming up Tuesday, April 22nd at uh, the JC Quarry View Center, and that's from 530 to 930. And I'd also like to uh, make you aware of the fact that the Mayor's International Committee is having a fundraiser at the Weill Center on Monday, April 15th at 7 o'clock. They're bringing the UW Band in so that people can continue that celebration after they win the Final Four this coming weekend. <laughs> yes, Alderman Hammond? I think it's the 14th. Yes, that's the 14th. Thank you. Go Badgers! <laughs> Okay, next we'll go on to the consent agenda. That includes items 2.1 through 2.20. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file all ROs, accept and adopt all RCs, and put all resolutions and ordinances upon their passage. Second. Thank you for that motion on the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to um, point out uh, document 2.15, which is the um, Chief of Police annual report. I just wanted to mention a few things. I first wanted to thank him for putting the, the report together. If you, hadn't, if you haven't had a chance to look at it, it's great. There's a lot of information. But most importantly, I want to thank him and his officers for the, uh, the work that they are doing in this city. Um, one of the biggest uh, significance um, acts of 2013 was an 18% reduction in part one crime. And that includes um, thefts, um, break-ins, rape, homicide, all the, all the essentially serious crimes. We've had an 18% reduction, and that's due to the work of his um, officers being out on the streets every day, knocking on doors and getting, get, getting to know the um, neighbors in the neighborhood. So thank you. Thanks for highlighting the good work of the police department. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? 15 ayes. Motion passes. 
In, next, we'll go on to reports of officers, including items 3.1 through 3.14. Those will all be referred to various committees. And then under resolutions, item 4.1 is a resolution by Alderman Heideman, Boren, Bellinger, and Pentico approving the agreement uh, for tree re removal. Alderman Heideman. Thank you, Mayor. I first need a uh, motion to suspend the rules. Second. We have a motion to suspend. Is there any discussion? See none, will the clerk call the roll? Fifteen Thank ayes. Under suspension. Thank you. Uh, this resolution um, regards a, a contract with a, a local company to remove to continue to remove trees in the city. Um, over the last couple of weeks, our Department of Public Works have done a fine job of clearing a bunch of like a hundred some trees that they've already cleared up. This is to continue to work and get those men that were doing the trees on the city streets. So thank you very much. Is there any other discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk call the roll? Fifteen ayes. Items 4.2 through 4.9 will also be referred to various committees. Under Section 5, reports of committees. Item 5.1 is a report of committee by the Sustainable Task Force recommending opposing the construction of a nuclear waste repository in the Great Lakes Basin. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept and adopt and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and the support. The motion is before us for any discussion. Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Fifteen ayes. Motion passes. Item 5.2 is a report of committee by Public Protection and Safety recommending entering into a purchase agreement and, uh, and an associated seven-year capital lease for the purchase of one rescue pumper apparatus for the fire department. Alderman Carlson. Thank you once again, Mayor. I move to accept and adopt and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you, and thank you for the support. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk call the roll? Nope. I'm sorry, Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> I'm, going to I'm going to support this tonight, but I do have a question for Mr. Amodio. Uh, back a few months ago, we were purchasing <coughs> a, few, uh, a few garbage trucks, and we decided to purchase those garbage trucks out outright without considering a lease, and I'm wondering what the thought was behind uh, going with a lease on the, on the pumper <coughs> Uh, where we didn't with the garbage trucks, uh, that's quite a bit of interest, $38,979.80. Uh, so I'm just wondering the thought that went into not leasing garbage trucks, but leasing the pumper. City Administrator Modio, would you like to come to the front and take that question? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor. At the time when we looked at the garbage trucks, the interest rate was excessive. Um, we're renting or we're leasing the fire truck from Pierce directly and we got a favorable rate of 2.99%. That was the difference. If that answers your question. Go ahead, Alderman. Uh, I don't know how you knew the uh, interest rate was excessive because you didn't put it out for bid. It was a, it was a hurry up thing about two days before the meeting where you decided not, not to lease the, gar the garbage trucks and we never got any bids. So how can we say it was excessive if we didn't get bids? Well, we called a few of uh, a few leasing companies, and the rates were in the four percent range. And with a few days to go, we had to make a decision. And uh, I I believe that it was too costly at a four percent rate. That really wasn't market uh, to re to lease those garbage trucks. So this is a percent difference, then, basically. Yes. For four trucks, uh, the purchase was one. 1.1 million, so. Thank you for that question. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? 15 ayes. Motion passes. Next, we'll go on to ordinances. Uh, ordinance 6.1 and 6.2 will lie over. And under matters laid over, we have 7.1, which is General Ordinance Number 56 of 1314 by Alderman Boren, Vanderweel, 
Dassler amending the municipal code to delete and add various positions to the fire department table of organization. Alderman Boren. This is 7.1. Yes, uh, it is. I'll put the general, I'll make a motion to put the general ordinance upon its passage. Second. It's been moved and seconded to put the ordinance on its passage under discussion. Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll on passage? 15 ayes. Motion passes. Next, we'll go on to other matters. City Clerk. Um, 8.1 is an arrow by the City Clerk submitting a communication from James Reinald putting in a request to cut the flip flop parking at the same time as daylight savings time ends which is before April 1st for year to year, not just one time. That'll go to <laughs> public protection and safety. 8.2 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications. That'd be referred to law and licensing. 8.3 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a claim from Nicole Reynolds for alleged damages to her vehicle when a city front end loader uh, was removing snow and scratched the front driver's side panel to the passenger door. That'll be referred to finance. 8.4 is a resolution by Alderman Hammond authorizing the city of Sheboygan to enter into a contract for dock repairs at the Harbor Center Marina. That will be referred to Public Works. 8.5 is a resolution by Alderman Heideman authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into contract with traffic and parking control for the purposes of purchasing traffic signal equipment. That will be referred to Public Works. 8.6 is a general ordinance by Alderman Hammond annexing territory owned by the city to the city of Sheboygan. Uh, that will be referred to the City Planning Commission. 8.7 is a resolution by Alderman Hyman <coughs> authorizing the purchasing agent to enter into contract for the replacement of sanitary sewer for North 20th Street from Cleveland Avenue to, Il to Geely Avenue and North 6 from Euclid to approximately 160 feet to the south. That will be referred to the Public Works Committee. 8.8 .8 is a resolution by Alderman Hammond authorizing the city clerk to move various city of Sheboygan wards to new polling places for all future elections. That what document will lie over. 8.9 is a resolution by Alderman Hammond authorizing the city of Sheboygan to enter into a contract for buildings and property insurance coverage. That will be referred to the Finance Committee. 8.10 is a resolution by Alderman Hammond, Carlson, Bellinger, Dassler, and Heideman to authorize a transfer of appropriations in the 2014 budget. Be referred to the Finance Committee. And 8.11 is a resolution by all the persons Hammond, Vanderweel, Heidemann, and Carlson amending Res 125-1314 relating to the um, 2014 one-year annual action plan for the community development block grant program submission. That will lie over. Next, we have a closed session scheduled. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to convene into closed session under the exemption contained in 19851E Wisconsin statutes for the purpose of deliberating a proposed development project where competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session. Second. It's been moved and seconded to go into closed session. Will the clerk please call the roll? David? Fifteen eyes. Motion passes. We'll take a five-minute recess and reconvene. <laughs> 